All right, uh, boxing fans are going to be looking forward to uh, a new documentary. It's called Lift Your Heels, but it's going to be one of those documentaries, uh, I think, particularly for, for us here in this part of the world or in this country, like that are going to take an interest in it because it will it will transcend uh, its, its its subject matter because it's it's so interesting. Uh, now we have on the program the subject of that documentary, Jason Quigley. Uh, good morning, Jason. Great to see you again. How are you keeping? I'm all good, Greg. Thanks for having me on. How's the form? Ah, oh, the form is good. Look, we'll talk about this uh, this uh, documentary in a moment. But what's the story in terms of uh, where you're going next, Jason? If you any any plans in place or anything coming up that your fans might want to hear about? Yeah, well, um, we're still just in a little bit of recovery now at the minute. Um, I obviously had uh, surgery and had two plates put into my mouth. Uh, the bone now is fully healed up. Everything is uh, 100% healed. But I had to get surgery about three weeks ago as well just to get those plates removed. So I'm just in a bit of recovery now from that there. And once I get the green light then from uh, the surgeon that I'm able to get back full train and everything, we will sit down, have a talk with the team and uh, see what's next then. Yeah, when do you hope to get back into full contact sort of uh, sparring sessions and what have you? We're, we're, we're probably looking maybe in about two months' time, um, but we're going to have to gradually ease into that. We can't just kind of go straight back in and get hit by Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury or any of those lads. So <laughs> I think, it'll be... Uh, I think I'd be, try uh, and avoid that uh, Avoid yeah. that if you had a full uh, platanium uh, or whatever it is, a titanium jaw. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, as I, say, I really want to focus on the documentary, but just in terms of, of the path, is it still your intention really to say, look, I've just uh, come out of a fight at the very highest level. You know, my stock has gone up. You want to be sort of going back in at that, maybe a, an elimination type bout or even maybe if another, another championship opportunity come along. Is that where you see your, your next couple of fights, Jason? Or do you want to maybe a, a gentle warm-up fight and then on to that? Yeah, that's something that's going to have to be... Uh going to have to be really uh, sat down and talked about it's uh, something that you know I'm coming to that stage now in my career it's going to be probably the last chapter now you know it's uh, at that stage now and we need to make sure that we make the right moves and you know I'm very lucky that I have a great team around me to do that but um, without a doubt you know it's uh, it's something that you know I really want to have a talk with the, the, the loved ones around me, not only the boxing team, but have a talk with the people that mean the most to me as well and uh, make a decision then and make a plan what's uh, what's the next move. And very finally, middleweight, is that your is that where you're at? Would you Could you squeeze down to a lower weight? Not, or? not right now. I'm not sitting in my lower weight. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, no, middleweight Speaking is. Speaking of that Anthony Joshua fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is just me kind of steadily kind of opening that path up. Yeah, well, <laughs> but, can, I, can uh, I yeah, look do it? Why not you? But go on. Middleweight, uh, middleweight is my weight, yeah. um, but I'd be able to campaign at middleweight or super middleweight. I don't think, you know, going below would be it. Would be an option not possible okay listen right so lift your heels this is chronicling uh the, such a huge part of your life the highs and, and and the lows uh tell us about this documentary because anyone that will have seen the previous work that uh does have put together no uh, they haven't done too much of it actually really you know in terms of this type of a documentary so you're right in at the start of what they're doing but they're doing it at a fantastic level so tell us the story of lift your heels well it's really um you know, a look into the build-up to my fight against Demetrius Andred. Uh, you know, camp, how camp went, uh, the accommodation, eating, everything that kind of goes on, all the behind-the-scenes kind of stuff into uh, a training camp. And then there was, you know, a little bit more uncomfortable stuff for me um, as a person because usually it's just, you know, How's your training going? What's your weight like? Are you excited for the fight? All these stuff is just natural to me, and I've been doing it for years. But, you know, there's been a lot of stuff then that is, uh, how do we look into my personal life? Um, a few things have come up about relationships, everything that goes on in my personal life. So this was something that was very different for me, and uh, it was very interesting as well. Did it help? Did you, you know, especially when you talk about, you know, the, the stuff like use top-level athletes, suffer with the same stuff others do you know you have times where you feel anxious you have times where you might not be in the in the best place mentally and all that type of stuff discussing personal things did, did, 
Was that difficult for you, or was it helpful for you, or, or what? Um, I think you know, at, at this stage in my life now, um, I, I'm at a great place. You know, um, mentally, emotionally, I, I'm in a I'm in a really great place in my life right now, and I'm well able to deal with all these things now. I'm well able to deal with trauma from the past, hard times that I have gone through in the past, and one of my main objects, you know, from this documentary as well is, you know, I really want people to take something away from this and hopefully that it can help someone understand that just because somebody's fighting for a world title or just because somebody is living a very good lifestyle on paper, that's not always the way in their head or that's not always the way behind closed doors. Mm. And, you know, everything isn't always, you know, uh, up on cloud nine. There is definitely difficult times and everybody, you know, I think the majority of people in this world um, at some stage of their life has gone through anxiety, bits of depression, of course, some at a higher and lower levels, but it doesn't matter how high or how low the levels of, of it is. It still affects your life. It still affects your day to day. And uh, that was something that was very difficult to talk about. But um, as I says, I'm in a great place now and I can deal with this and I can talk about this openly because I really want to do this to help other people as well. Yeah, indeed. And I think that's amazing. But also what we'll see is um, what it takes, you know, what commitment it takes, what determination it takes. Uh, the the athleticism boxers possess, anyone who wants to know how tough boxing is, go and watch like one of those white collar boxing matches or I wouldn't encourage anyone to watch uh, an abomination of a show at the weekend. It was YouTube, American YouTubers versus, uh, I don't know if you saw that versus... Uh, I've seen the clip uh, of the guy that oh, had both of the, like, you know... That was only part of it, right? But anyway, I don't think that's good for the sport. But anyway, that's what happens when you put in a year's training or you put in three months training. You're gassing after a minute. What you guys do, you know, is is absolutely unbelievable. We'll get an insight into that, the sacrifices and the life that you have to leave and the ter determination it takes to step in through those ropes at the best you can actually be. Yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of sacrifices and don't get me wrong, to be successful or to, to reach goals and limits and heights that you set yourself, you're going to have to make sacrifices in life. You know, everybody can, we can just, you know, live a nice have a steady life and never really go outside our comfort zone but you will never really experience or achieve anything out of the ordinary with that and that's something that you know in boxing that i never really thought of i suppose because your whole life is just going 100 miles an hour um you're looking at the next fight you're looking at the next training camp you're injured. When am I going to recover? When am I next out? When can I get back in the ring? Everything is just happening so quick and so fast. And you never really get time to look back at what you have been through and where you have came from. And doing this documentary actually brought up some questions that made me look back and made me look where I came from and made me look at everything that I have gone through in my life and in my sport. And you know, it was, it was strange. It was difficult because I'm just usually always looking forward yeah. all this, every single time. And, you know, what's next? How do I become the, the champion? You know, just working everything out and just trying to get to the top of the tree all the time. And yes, you know, looking back, there has been so much that you sacrifice. There's so much that you go through, but not only you, it's the people that's around you. And I think it's only then that you actually realize and appreciate what people do for you in terms of your family and friends, like what they go through just as much as you do whenever uh, whenever you're away training, whenever you're away in camp and whenever you're in the ring as well. You topped the bill um, on a massive show. Uh, took on, you know, one of the best fighters out there in Demetrius Andrade. He is uh, something else. Is that the pinnacle of your career or is the pinnacle yet to come, do you think? very good question it's something that you know i haven't really probably sat down and, and thought about because my main object over the last while has just been making sure that i get this jaw healed up and that that i'm that i'm back to 100 percent. but yeah like you know if you had to say to me before i turned professional that that would happen then i would have just took the two arms off you and says but you're yes, hungry now you want more 
yeah, of course, you know, yeah. you, you feel that and you see that and you you see like the support leading up to that fight was unbelievable. The buzz, the atmosphere, everything was just like it was an unbelievable week. The the whole fight week from from when I touched down in Boston, like it was it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I really enjoyed it. I got excited, but controlled excitement. I was very focused, very relaxed. Um, I think I had everything kind of taken care of, and you know I felt probably the best I ever felt going into that fight. And in boxing, these things happen. It's just very unfortunate, and you know the better man on the night just landed that shot and took things away from me. And that's probably one of the most frustrating things of the fight was that I didn't even get a chance to grab that fight. Yeah. I didn't even get it, get to get stuck into that fight because in that fight I was, yes, I was put down and my jaw was broke, but I was never hurt in a way that I couldn't continue. Mm. You know, I was well, we never, never get wobbled. to see, we never got, of course, and that was clear. You didn't even really look that buzzed at all. We never got to see, what you and Andy Lee and others had put in place. We never got a chance to see what would happen when you frustrate him, when you take him down. Did he prepare for you? Did he look past you? All those questions we 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 haven't had answers to because of that one punch that just did what it did. Yeah, and like that's that's what I mean. That's probably the most sickening and hurtful thing and the hardest thing to try and get over is like I trained my whole life for that for that fight. Like everything was you know, that's, that's what you want. As soon as you start boxing, you know, you want to be a world champion. And I got to that point where I was fighting for that world championship. And, you know, I didn't get the opportunity. If, if I was hurt and if I was buzzed and my legs were unsteady, then at least I could have just says, right, I need to try and knock him out here. Like mm. I, this is just got to go for broke. Hail Mary here now. And I didn't do that because I was still mentally all aware. I was still just trying to stay out of distance, trying to stay out of danger because I knew I just had to get over that flurry of punches, that that burst of excitement from him. And I didn't get the chance. Yeah. The referee stopped it. You were still yeah. in plan A mode. You, you, you didn't even have to look at a plan, but you were still in plan A mode. That's the, the brain space you were, you were still in. Like every time that whenever I got up off the canvas, I knew I was like, right, just stay focused, try not get caught again. Like everything was working, the brain was working, the legs were good. Um, he just he just caught me with that shot. And, you know, obviously I got asked the question there recently, um, do did, did I agree with what the referee's decision? And it's a funny one because I don't agree with the referee's decision to stop the fight because I was able to continue. He didn't know my jaw was broken. 100%. I didn't know my yeah. jaw jaw was broken. I knew something was badly wrong with my mouth, but we did not obviously know at the time and your adrenaline's rushing. You just want to keep going. So looking back on the fight, I'm happy now, obviously, that the referee had stopped it because, you know, going another 10 rounds with a broken jaw could have been some serious damage. He but... stopped it at the right time, but for the wrong reasons. Exactly. That's yeah. 100% spot on. All right. Okay. Well, listen, hopefully there's a, at least one more night, night for us to look forward to. Lift your heels. Uh, this is a and, and, and all, access all areas uh, look at this we'll, we'll get an insight like we've never before the Parker one was brilliant I'm sure this one's going to be great too when is it released because I've been looking out for it and I couldn't see a I couldn't see a promo for when it was to be released so when is it actually out it's going to actually be out now on um, Thursday night on Virgin Media 2 at 10.30pm and uh, you know the team did a great you know great teamwork to get all this together uh, with the likes of Ladbrokes and uh, Swish Films who who put it together as well. It was unbelievable. So it was, everyone worked so well together because yeah. obviously I was going into a world title fight and they didn't want to cause any problems. So they were very respectful and uh, it was a good team effort to but get it done. Then they got the access and it's great that everyone can watch it. So it's on Virgin Media 1 at... Virgin Media 2. Virgin Media 2, sorry, Jason. Virgin Media 2. Okay, we look forward to it. It's called Lift Your Heels. It gives us a full, uh, an, an access all areas kind of look uh, to, to the biggest night so far in Jason's Quigley, uh, Jason Quigley's uh, boxing uh, career. We can't wait to uh, see it. As I say, you know, previous documentaries that have been released this year uh, with the same kind of a field would have been excellent. So I'm sure this one will be uh, excellent too. There's some brilliant people working on this stuff. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. All right, it. take Thanks care of yourself. Thanks very much, much indeed.